Hello everybody, welcome to section 27. Um, you can see on the back side of the firewall here, I have outlined some of the parts and it was purely because I just couldn't put together in my head what lines up with what, what overlaps what. So no need to really do that. It was just me trying to figure out how to make everything work. The flanges of this firewall are curled in some places, so my back riveting bar was not ideal. A back riveting bar with a tungsten bar underneath it was just enough height to where I could keep back riveting. And the back riveting is pretty straightforward. You gotta watch out for some doublers every now and then. Also watch out, um, I definitely dimpled where the battery box was supposed to go so I then took the battery box and uh, countersunk the backside of or no I didn't I think I dimpled the battery box even though it was relatively heavy duty material to make it work with the firewall called vans talked to a technical person and they said no worries as I figured to. Um, coming up you'll see me use 3M fire barrier for the firewall. Um, a lot of people use that. Seems to be the same properties as fuel tank sealant but of course it's fire barrier so it has a higher threshold for heat. You'll also see there's a lot of overlap in the firewall sealant you might have also noticed that I put it on the wrong side so then I had to redo it that was really fun nothing a little MEK couldn't take off but that was a frustrating whoopsie but yes you'll see there's a lot of fire tank sealant just kinda of overlapping right there you can see it perfectly and that's because God forbid if the engine is on fire I really don't care how that looks I just care whether or not it's stopping the heat from coming into the cabin and giving me enough time to get down um, right here this is the point where you should be stopping everything and deciding whether or not you're gonna do OP 62 you will also see that that floor was also already built because of the laser cut issues that I've previously described in other videos um, so this is the point where you should be taking the tunnel sides and clicking it to each side of the floor, drilling out your number 19, uh, putting a number 8 screw in there to get the nut plates and the nut plates drilled out on either side, dimpling the floor. This is the time to do that. Don't do what I did and skip over it. Well, not even, I mean, I've skipped to a whole nother section because of my laser cut issues, but. Anyways, uh, the center section is pretty well straightforward. It leaves the flange kind of just hanging there in the middle that will eventually go to section 28. And once again, you can see it's, it's kind of sloppy, but I don't know. Um, I've seen people do a really pretty thin bead I just don't there's a little part of me that feels a little bit more comfortable having somewhat of an eyesore but quite a lot of fire protection uh, that's not to say though that it's thick between the materials because whenever you're doing this you you want the materials to mate up without a lot of thickness between them so usually what you're doing is just putting down the sealant then back riveting so it's gonna the back riveting is gonna squash out any sealant anyways but also be careful of that too um yeah I don't think i have a lot else nothing else that really bites you in this section it's just that op62 making sure that you have the tunnel sides drilled out correctly.
And that's about it. I'm going to let this one pretty much just play out. And I'll see everybody in section 28.